At one point in our lives, so many of us suffer from some sort of sleep deprivation. Here to finally help us get a good night's rest is Dr. Howard Awad, medical director of the Sleep Medicine Group. You've been studying good morning sleep for 15 years. Absolutely. Yeah. All over the world. Yeah. And you've been, you've been coming across more and more discoveries that are also affecting children as well as women increasing with things like sleep apnea. So let's get started. What is, is causing um, you know, disruptive sleep and how do we know if we actually have a problem that needs to be addressed? I mean, first of all, sleep is a very common problem. Uh, the general population now are trying to take good care of their health, exercise, eat properly and what have you. And uh, in, in order to get the most results, you need good sleep. And uh, most people do not have a good idea what is good sleep is all about. So good sleep means that you are getting adequate sleep, which is six to eight hours for most people, and uninterrupted sleep which means that when you wake up in the morning, you are feeling refreshed and rested. Interesting you say that. Some people believe, especially on this shift, because we work such off hours, to do the split shift where you take a nap in the afternoon and then you have four hours, which isn't good. You need at least six consecutive hours of sleep? Indeed, yeah. Okay, that's good to know. And teenagers tend to sleep in in the morning. Is that okay? Should you encourage that? Uh, teenagers uh, have a biological tendency to, to have a sleep shift. Uh, their brain is somehow getting them to stay later and to sleep in uh, in the morning. Uh, if it is within two hours, say, if like most people, if they go to sleep between 10, 10 and 11, and maybe teenagers will go to bed at 1, and they sleep in, if possible, to about uh, 9, 9 a.m., it's okay. okay. However, if you shift your sleep more than two hours, it has some implication in terms of sleep quality and also in terms of your function during the day. Okay. Because we sleep most and best during the night. And that's why our brain uh -huh. is trained to release uh, some important hormones. One of them is melatonin, which people take some time to Yeah, you hear. brought that there. I hear a lot about melatonin as well as the strips. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just I, I brought the melatonin because it is most probably the most one of the most common uh, over-the-counter medication that people take. Okay. And it does work, and it does work well. It's not it, addictive. It's non-addictive. It is safe, and that's why it is sold over the counter. Tell uh, us about this shirt, doctor. How did what? How does this work? What is it? What does it do exactly? Okay. This is for people it, who snore. Okay. And I also want to say something about snoring. Snoring is could potentially be a serious problem. Okay. So if you snore, you, have, you could potentially have a problem uh, with something called sleep apnea, which is a very serious common disease. Obesity causes a lot of it, correct? Uh, uh, obesity is alcohol and smoking. However, some people who are totally normal weight and who do not have any of those risk factors can have sleep apnea because it is a hereditary uh, disease called by a narrow airway. Okay, so how does this function? How this function is, people who snore heavily and who do not have a sleep apnea and uh, are checked for it, if they wear this at night, it stops them from sleeping on their back, mm. which is the most common sleeping position for people to snore and to have breathing disturbances. Okay. So if you use this and sleep on your back, you get uncomfortable, you move to your side. Okay. So it does minimize snoring and also it does improve sleep quality because believe it or not, when people snore, the sound, uh, uh, like the sound itself can wake people up so they move. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, like as you move frequently at night, that will impair your sleep quality and make you wake up not feeling the most refreshed. And I like that he says sleep on your right side opposite the heart, which is very interesting. Very, yeah. uh, very important because you don't want to put your body weight on the top of your heart. Okay. And also, lots of people sleep on their stomach. Very bad sleeping position. Great Very stuff. Bad. For more tips, thank you so much. Sleep Awareness Week runs from Monday through March 6th. Sleepawake.com for more information in terms of diet, too, what you should be eating and what you should be avoiding for a good night's rest. Over to Kevin in the newsroom. Hope that helps him.